good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Space Spotlight. Today, we're going up the East Coast, up to Charlotte, North Carolina, where we find NASCAR Cup Series driver, Anthony Alfredo. Anthony, thank you for being with us this evening. Of course. Thanks for making time for me. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, um, gosh, I was kind of getting my notes ready for this interview, and I thought, man, what a four-year whirlwind that you've been through. When you stop and think about how you progressed through this, starting, you know, even if you go back to the Cars Tour with Junior Motorsports and then ARCA with MDM and the trucks with DGR, you know, Xfinity with Richard Childress Racing, and here you are at the Cup Series. What has that been like? It's it's been surreal, you know. First off, it's I never expected to the last couple of years to to even have the opportunities I've had, and definitely not uh, or didn't plan to be a Cup Series driver already. Uh, it's pretty surreal. I'm very blessed. I'm thankful to have so many amazing people around me. Uh, but one thing I will point out is is just uh, the the opportunities I have had were usually part time, and even when I ran in the the K and N Pro Series E Series, now the Arca E Series, that's only a thirteen race schedule. So I haven't run more than uh, I'd say I think eighteen or nineteen races in a season in the last four years. And now in the Cup Series, obviously it's a thirty six point race schedule, thirty eight with the non points events, which is unbelievable. So. Uh, I only started racing in general seven years ago. I raced go-karts when I was younger, but I took some time off to play other sports, but it really didn't start, um, you know, seriously racing until uh, seven years ago in the legend car and then a, a limited late model and, and moving up from there, as you just mentioned uh, with all these teams. So it's been, uh, you know, maybe don't have a ton of overall experience, definitely not as much as I had planned on while, before getting into a cup car, but um, at this, uh, in this, field that opportunities can be few and far between, especially while you're running part-time. And I've just tried my best to make the most of them. And the last two years at the end of the season, I wasn't hundred percent certain what uh, God's plan was for me and what the next step was going to be in my career. And it just seemed I was at the right place at the right time or a door opened. And when opportunity comes a knock and you can't, uh, you definitely need to answer, you know? So uh, especially when you have the opportunity to race on Sunday, it's just tremendous amount of experience I'm able to gain with a great group of people at Front Row Motorsports. So as you said, it's been a unbelievable last few years, uh, lots of ups and downs, just a uh, lot of experience, a lot of different opportunities, but I just tried to make the most out of every one. And I, I think that's part of what's helped get me here along with the, the tremendous help of all the people around me. Well, I'm a firm believer that good things happen to good people. And I put you in that category. I've had you in that category since the very first time that we met. And, um, you know, it, do you find yourself like on Sunday, like walking out on that grid and still feel like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that I'm actually here? Absolutely. Every every racetrack I've gone to so far this year has just been s- crazy. Even racing in the truck series, the Xfinity series, I feel like the last the last three years in particular, you know, every every time I've got the chance to race, I've I've tried to not take it for granted, make the most of the opportunity, and just appreciate it because uh, I, I really don't want to look back on it one day and be like, wow, I didn't appreciate you know how fortunate I was to do that. Um, so I, I try my best to do that and it's easy to get caught up in the grind, so to speak. And, you know, you're working so hard, try, you know, just trying to do your best that sometimes you, you miss out of those moments. Maybe, you know, already at Daytona 500 came and went so fast. I just want to do it all over again. That was probably one that sticks out the most to me this year. Just first cup race, biggest race of the year, just so many different emotions, having my family there with me. It was, a uh, just incredible experience. So All these things, uh, even just going to Dover this weekend, racing at Darlington last weekend, throwback weekend, all those things, you know, these are tracks that I went to as a fan and we're watching these races. And now I'm one of 40 drivers out there at the highest level in our sport. There's not many other ways I could put that, uh, that put it into perspective like that. Yeah, I I was, uh, I can remember, you know, kind of watching the Daytona 500. And even, even for me, it was kind of like, oh my gosh, you know, he's actually out here. And, you know, what, I, I think what a lot of people kind of miss a little bit is now with the new formats, with no practice, no qualifying. I mean, you're going to these tracks, some of them for the very first time, definitely the first time in a cup car. And, and when you look back at it, 
I mean, when you look back at some of the other drivers that came up through the fields that Jeff Gordon's and the Tony Stewart's and stuff like that, we had the opportunity to practice at these tracks over and over and over instead of just jumping in the car for the first time. I mean, um, you know, I, I couldn't even imagine in, in my wildest dreams what it would be like to take my first laps at Daytona under green. That's, that's just crazy. It, it is. It sounds crazy even when you say I feel like I'm kind of used to it by now, especially after having to do it for all but one Xfinity Series race of mine last year and 18 or 19 races. And the, the first one was the, was pre-COVID. The rest were during um, the pandemic. So we didn't have any practice or qualifying and, and same with this year. So we do have for a couple events. We had it for Daytona. Um, well, I think one session and then we qualified and we'll have it for the Coke 600 and some of these new tracks, thankfully, but you're right. There's nobody else who's ever had to do that. Uh, when I was with RCR last year, the first race back after the pandemic was at Darlington. Actually, it was my first time there. And he said, uh, Andy Petrie told me after the race that you realize nobody else has ever done this. He's like, you just raised Darlington, one of the hardest tracks on the schedule with no practice, you know, after a two month quarantine or whatever we are off for he's like nobody's ever had to do that no no driver in history so i'd say for all the rookies in in any of the top three series uh throughout probably three quarters of last season and obviously all this season there couldn't be a more challenging time to be a rookie and at the cup level it's just a, a such a tall order because of the competition standpoint it, obviously it's as competitive as it gets and it's 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 pretty hard to catch up to the experience of guys who've been racing in the series for almost as long as I've been alive. <laughs> yeah. So, so let me ask you, you know, I know that you're extremely involved in, in sim racing and the iRacing racing standpoint, you've had the iRacing racing on your car for a couple of times. Um, how much has that actually helped not only what you're doing in the Sims, but then you get the opportunity to go get into Chevrolet or into the Ford simulator which has got to be, again, just something at the whole other level, I would imagine. Yeah, it's it's just the super elaborate, you know, extensive version of of the product iRacing has for, um, you know, the general public, which is what's so cool about it, be able to interact with fans, hone your skills and, and kind of develop racecraft. It's played a huge role in my career on the track, obviously, especially more than ever recently because of the fact that we don't have practice or qualifying. I can get a good visual for these tracks, feel them out, learn some things. Uh, and on top of that, it's opened a lot of doors for me off the track, even uh, with my role in the esports community. I'm a partner of Lockdown Racing, which is a professional iRacing team. I'm also a co owner of uh, Exit Gaming's e NASCAR Coca Cola iRacing Series charter, and I'm a content creator and brand ambassador for them. So to be a part of a, a real esports organization that's, that's making huge. Uh, huge shifts in that in that industry and scene has been really cool and obviously there's been a lot of transition uh from sim to reality as i like to call it with both sim seats driving simulators i racing themselves and now uh, one of my newer partners dbox technology who make haptic systems so it's pretty awesome to to see all that kind of coming full circle uh and trans and, and really just bridge the gap between the esports industry and the motorsports industry so anthony what do you do when you're when you're when your days are off or do you have any days off? It seems like you are one busy driver right now. And you know, the cool thing about this is, is that you were just featured in a feature article in USA today. I mean, that's pretty cool. It doesn't get much better than that. I, I actually, uh, my uh, grandmother was the one who saw that and uh, or a friend of hers and shared it with her and she sent it throughout the family and we all made sure we got a copy to save for uh for the memory book, uh, because that's, that's pretty cool and really special. And it was really awesome how it mainly covered kind of my role off the track and what I do behind the scenes, mainly within esports. Um, and like you said, it, there is a lot going on. I don't have that much time off because I always made sure even running part-time, I, I utilized um, that added time off when I was running part-time to do more off the track, build my brand, uh, develop relationships and network and, and obviously training and all those other things that apply to on the track. 
Uh, but now running full time in the cup series is the, the busiest schedule and, and one of the longest competitive schedules in all of sports. Uh, I don't have as much time for some of these other things. Uh, and the little time I do have, I definitely dedicate to them. But as a, a wise man once said, if you uh, love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. So I'm definitely not complaining about any of it. Well, it has been a fast thing. And again, you know, it's, it's, it's so cool when you're racing and, and all of a sudden, you know, you start to get orders in. Your fast pasta brand is like exploding. And what a lot of people may not know about you is you're quite the tennis shoe collector. So tell us a little bit about your collection of shoes. So I've got a pretty significant collection of shoes. Not crazy, not not as wild as some people, but it's uh it's it's fairly <laughs> extensive. Mainly uh, made up of Adidas, Ultra Boost, and. Uh, NMD shoes like that. They're just super comfortable and I love the way they look. So I just couldn't stop accumulating more and more pairs of them. Uh, but the only cool part about that is you could wear a different pair every day for uh, maybe about a month. I'm looking at them right now <laughs> and you know, you keep cycling through. So they all stay super clean and I take good care of them. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, with what time that we have left, what tracks are you looking forward to um, I know that coda has got to be on that list someplace. Uh, that place is just amazing. So uh, what are what are a couple of the tracks that you're really looking forward to go racing at? Well, since you led me into it, I'll definitely start with Circuit of the Americas. I mean, to race at a Formula One track is awesome, especially because it's the inaugural event there for our sport. So to be a part of that in one sense is super cool. And just to go there in general and compete is is a uh, pretty neat opportunity and I think it'll be a, a great show and then in addition to that there's some other new tracks on the schedule or at least new to me and those are all ones I'm excited about just because I love going to new tracks uh, but there definitely are some tracks that I have been to that I have a little bit high on the higher on the priority list because I, I know they might be a great opportunity to go um, compete well or, or you know uh, maybe snag a, a very competitive finish so uh, those plays include the super speedways. I really like plate racing and then some other ones like Texas. A lot of people don't love the new Texas configuration since they redid it. And uh, for some reason, since I've raced there, I've, I've had a pretty solid speed in, in everything I've raced there. So I'm looking forward to going there, especially because that's uh, speedy Cash's home track. Uh, so that'll be cool to, to be there and try to do well for them. And there's some other ones on the schedule as well, but the intermediates have always kind of been, uh, my uh, my forte, if you will, I've ran a lot of those recently and learned a lot about them, even though I have been running per part time. And I think that's where we excel. Right. So I, I got to ask you this question. You gave a shout out to dude wipes at the race. Was it Vegas? Yes. In Vegas. You kind of just kind of walk us through that because all the announcers were talking about it on, on TV. Just give us your side of that radioactive, if you would, because you did make radioactive on race night as well. Yeah, well, it all really, I mean, to start, first things first, I've been fortunate to uh, only work with brands that I'm a true advocate of and have great relationships with and to be on such a friendly uh, level with them and, you know, always making jokes like that or, or something hairy happens on iRacing with my friends and someone will say, oh, Oh, you need a dude wipe after that, you know, whatever. And it was the first, it was just natural. I mean, it doesn't, I didn't plan that. Everyone's like, wow, what a, what a, uh, you know, uh, what's the word? What, what a way to, ambassador. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What a way to throw that in there. And I'm like, I, it just, that was the first thing that came to mind was I need a dude wipe because that was such a sketchy moment. Uh, I think it was Alex Bowman blew a tire and was trying to make it to pit road at the very right. last second. And I was coming at, you know, I don't know, was coming off the exit of turn four at Vegas at 170 miles an hour, probably. And there was really, there was, you know, nowhere I could go. I just held it as low as I could. And he was coming down the track and it was a near miss. Uh, so it was a, it was a dude wipe moment for sure. <laughs> well, Anthony, I sure appreciate you being with us. You know, as I've always said, you know, your off track activities, the things that you're involved with, everything that you do, I, I can tell you, most people have no idea how hard this young man works off track. You see him on the races, in the cars, but man, there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes with him. 
You heard a little bit about it today with his Sims racing, but he's always given back to the community. Um, I'll just say it again. I think he's one of the most marketable drivers in the sport today, anywhere. I don't care if you're looking at NASCAR, or IndyCar, it doesn't matter. Anthony, you've done a great job. Proud to say that you're one of my friends and, and uh, we just wish you the best of luck for the rest of the year. If you've not followed Anthony Alfredo, you need to make sure that you do that by just going to anthonyalfredo.com. Go up in the right-hand corner of his website because all the links are there. I mean, this guy's on more social media platforms than you can imagine. Check him out and all the stuff that he does on YouTube. And we didn't even bring up that you won a big uh, iRacing race. That's right. We did uh, win a couple big ones in, the, yeah. in within the last few months. Uh, I actually also, I've won some big events, but I've never won a championship in anything yet because I haven't had the opportunity to run full-time in any series. And uh, season two of the Monday Night Racing League, we just started season three. But season two, I uh, made it to the final four in the playoffs. We had won a bunch of races. I think I finished second or third like seven times, something crazy like that. Uh, and in the championship race while leading, my computer broke. So a, a PC sponsor is new, uh, new priority on that list of, <laughs> of people I'm reaching out to because my PC literally broke on uh, while leading the championship race and I lost the championship. But uh, we made up for it last week with a second place finish in the Pro Invitational Series race at Darlington in the j debut of the NASCAR next gen car. So hopefully that's a sign of good things to come when we get to go race it in real life. So could you tell the difference in that car? even though you were on the sim, because it looked like everybody went down into turn one and, you know, on the start of the race, it looked like the whole field was kind of like, uh oh, yeah, there was, there was like three different wrecks in turn one and two <laughs> on the first lap. Cause it was, nobody had been around that many other cars at the same time. And the, the aerodynamic model that iRacing implemented on it is, um, is more accurate than what they've had in, in prior models. And they made sure they implemented that in the new car and no one was ready for it. That's for sure. All right. Well, Anthony, again, thanks for being with us. Everybody go check out anthonyalfredo.com. Make sure to go to his fan zone. Sign up for his digital newsletter. Anthony, awesome job. We'll be looking forward to you. I'm actually going to be in Dover this weekend. I don't know if, I'll, if I'm going to be there when you're going to be there or not. But, uh, but good luck this weekend. And again, thanks for being with us. Of course. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Well, there you have it, everybody. The Race Face Spotlight interview with Anthony Alfredo. Make sure to check back with us in two weeks. We'll be bringing another race face driver for you to get to know a little bit more behind the scenes. Everybody have a great evening.